very warm welcome to Talking Europe. There are less people out of work in the EU today than this time last year. Eurozone unemployment rates are at their lowest level in five years. Today we're going to look at the job market in the EU. All good news? Well, no, not exactly. For the last few weeks, we've seen protests in Paris over proposed changes to labour laws, demonstrations in Duisburg calling for job protection in the face of cheap Chinese imports. Europeans are clearly do not feel secure about their economic future and their job markets. To tell us if the glass is really half empty or half full, we're joined here in studio by Arne Gernicke, German MEP, Europe Conservatives and Reformists, you sit with here in Brussels. Uh, beside you, we have Virginie Rosière, a French MEP with the Social Socialists and Democrats. And on the other side of the table, we have Mr. Enrique Calvé Chambon, Spanish MEP, Alliance of Liberals and Democrats, you sit with here in Brussels. And beside you, Jean Lambert, British MEP, Group of the Greens. Uh, Ms. Lambert, let me perhaps start with your good self. You come from a non Eurozone country. It's uh, doing remarkably well. Uh, unemployment at a 10 year low, I believe, uh, you know, down to 5% or that. Do you think overall unemployment, we are out of the woods, that the trend is going in the right direction, if you like? I don't think we're, we're out of the woods yet at all. I think if you look at the patterns of new employment coming in, quite a lot of that is temporary work. There are a lot of people, even in the UK, working part-time who want to work full-time. And I think there's still a feeling of a, an uncertainty um, about investment. And that's, I mean, the UK, there are obviously particular reasons for that at the moment. But I think across Europe as a whole, there's still this question about what direction is Europe taking? Um, you, you know, what sort of investment plus and another area is people are now also becoming concerned about whether the new sort of development in digital economy is really going to be good for jobs or whether we're going to see the next industrial revolution, as it were, and jobs being replaced again by machines. Indeed, robots taking over. Uh, the other good student, of course, at the table is Germany, 4.5% unemployment. Ms. Gernicke, a Eurozone country and yet doing very well. How do you see the situation, the outlook? Well, at the moment, um, of course, uh, if we have a good situation, we always have to see the statistics, what, what it really means. Is it full, em full employment or is it a lot of part-time jobs and so on, which really do not help uh, people to survive. Uh, and in this case, um, it, it's always uh, reading the numbers correctly to really see, is it uh, full employment or uh, really so, so low Germany? unemployment in Germany, as the numbers say. Uh, and so this is something uh, one has to prove. And on our side now, of course, we also have to see uh, the numbers coming in regarding the refugees and uh, the work which has to be done now regarding integration. And in this case, uh, numbers can go up again. Well, and, that's a very interesting so point this is because I know we have to take care about. In yeah. Germany, there it has been a law proposed, the integration law, and that would see uh, employers give stop giving preference really to German or EU employees for a period of three years in order to create more jobs for the new arrivals. Uh, how do you feel about that, Mr. Kelvi Chambon? Well, um, when we speak about employment and unemployment, and particularly job creation, we are speaking about many different concepts in Europe too. The problem is now uh, in some countries, really the job creation. In some, I would like to say, areas or European regions, no more than that. Uh, for instance, I belong to a circumscription, a constituency the, that is uh, normally the record of unemployment in Europe, in Spain, mm -hmm. with Greece, no, the south. And uh, that, so we are very concerned for, uh, about that. In other countries, like uh, uh, Germany, they are more concerned about the quality of the jobs, the, the stability of the jobs. In other countries, they are more concerned about uh, the rivalry with, um, with uh, immigrants, because immigrants generally, they, they, they want to go to Germany or to Finland, but they don't want to come to go. And in other countries, they are also worried about um, the, what we call working poor, because that is another aspect of uh, of the labor market is uh, not only to have an occupation, mm -hmm. sometimes it's more than an occupation than a job that has been told, but it's uh, that procures uh, relatively dignity in the life uh, through the salary and it's not absolutely 
That could be the idea of the dumping social. So, so when you pay people not enough to, to, to wear a, a, a real dig, digna, uh, life. dignified life. To have that. Uh, well, we know we're going to look in a few minutes at uh, there were law reforms put in place in Spain back in 2012. We'll check in on how they're going. Uh, similar reforms put up in Italy uh, just last year. It's one of the countries with rampant unemployment, notably among the young. Uh, last year, Prime Minister Matteo Renzi passed a reform called the Jobs Act. It, its aim was to encourage employment by making firing staff easier while at the same time ensuring significant compensation for those laid off. Our correspondents take a look at how the reforms have played out. Michaela is relieved. After working on a temporary contract for four years, he's finally got his first permanent contract at this liquor distillery. Hey Luisa, è pronta l'essenza per il lampone? Sì. Hired last December, he oversees the production in the distillery's laboratory. At 31, with a master's degree in quality control, he signed the new contract provided by Italy's Jobs Act. Before, on a temporary contract, I had no certainty. I didn't know if I had to leave when the contract ended. Now, with this permanent contract, I have much better prospects. I can make plans, think about buying a house. This company hired three employees following the Jobs Act. For each one of them, the company will receive a tax rebate of 24,000 euros, spread over three years. During that period, the contract can be revoked at any time. Due to globalization, production methods have changed. In a company like ours, we need to be able to hire staff when we need them and lay them off when we're in trouble. This new contract gives us that flexibility. Such flexibility, however, is proving unpopular with social partners. The Jobs Act is a law that generalizes job insecurity because today, even if a young person has a permanent contract, his situation is precarious because his employer can dismiss him at any time. Illegitimate dismissals are now declared legitimate. For Matteo Renzi, the head of the Italian government, the Jobs Act is a sure win. As he proudly displays in the streets of Rome, Following the implementation of the Act, more than 764,000 permanent contracts have been signed across the country. According to the National Institute of Statistics, in 2015, the average unemployment rate in Italy fell for the first time in seven years. Uh, Ms. Rosier, France is also trying to push uh, through some labour reforms that echoes a bit what we've seen there in Italy, uh, taking away this uh, idea of job security for life. Will that really create jobs? Well, I'm not pretty sure that uh, making uh, job uh, suppression easier will uh, encourage job, job creation. It's kind of a Because a lot of employers are saying, you know, they hesitate because once you employ someone in France, they feel like really they employ them for a long, long time and it's hard to get rid of them. So that's... that's it well, it's not particularly hard. You, you have uh, conditions, but if you want to fire someone, you have also to apply the rules and sometimes pay compensation. But this kind of fairness, you know. Because we've seen a similar, Mr. Kavish and Mon, I saw you reacting in that report, but we've seen a similar process put in place back in 2012 in Spain. Uh, critics, however, are saying that it did create more jobs, but only precarious ones. In, in Spain, what was really uh, targeted was the fact that what we call the internal devaluation. In fact, it was not uh, because the government uh, cannot create or very, very few job, public jobs. It tried simply to make uh, more competitive the Spanish production in, uh, as a whole. No? About precarity, that, that is what has been told here. It's very interesting. I think we are not, uh, I don't belong to any party, so I think we are not very sincere with, uh, with young and, and people. Uh, precarity is now part of our life, is installed. The all good jobs for life will never exist anymore. Yes. We can call it flexibility. Well, I, we have to tell them this is the truth. I have been myself many times uh, uh, right. unemployed. Eh? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I know in Ireland, we don't have that same mentality of what they call in France a CDI, a job really yeah. for an indeterminate amount of yes. time. Does that help? Because in the UK, you can get fired overnight. 
Well, in the, in the UK, the, the government has also recently changed the law there so that you can be fired at any point in the first two years of employment. After that, obviously, redundancy payments come in and that there's a whole process. I'm not sure that extending that from one year to two years has, has really helped. We already have a very f flexible labour market. But I think that people are getting more and more used to the idea that a job for life is... It, you know, is, is not going to be there, that things do change. And therefore, I think the question for policymakers is what are you doing to help people in those periods of transition? Yeah, exactly. You know, are the benefits exactly. adequate? Is the re, are the retraining possibilities mm. there? Yeah. You, you know, what are you doing to actually help people feel supported? And it's much more... This is why there's been such interest in the Scandinavian sort of flex security model. Mr Gallagher, you mentioned that the idea of uh, not full-time jobs is part, perhaps, of the solution to having very low unemployment rates? Yes, um, that is uh, the way I think in Germany these, this problem unemployment is dealt with. That uh, you make part-time jobs and so, and you don't just um, try and find out what, what do we need to make a living. Mm. And that, that's, of course, a, a very severe question because if, if we don't really solve this qu question, um, it, ha it um, means that many uh, or some groups of the population are always on the bad side of life. And um, regarding family, I'm from the family party in, in Germany, um, it mostly affects children. If children grow up in poverty, and children are a poverty risk, they already have uh, uh, something put into their biography which uh, makes them lose their perspective. And that then, in the, on the other side, uh, means that they have a bad start into life, and that can be a shadow on their whole biography. Ms. Lambert, you wanted... You need to make sure that people are not going to be in poverty one way or another, whether they're working and or as not, you say, is yeah. increasingly important, which is why Great. some countries are now looking at this concept of sort of a universal, universal basic income, like income and so yeah. on, you, you know, been because my that... party policy for oh. years. And... But... <laughs> This is legitimate, you know, if you consider that and there are studies saying that the, the, the amount of jobs available will decrease uh, because of automation and yeah. uh, digital uh, improvements. Yeah, and we can see that so, already. And uh, you, you can consider that for unqualified jobs, you have, you have a split in the working population. People with low or not at all, no qualif qualifications, they stay longer out of, out of the mm. labour market. Uh, as on the contrary, people with qualification now yeah. can have a, uh, a job for all their life and they, or they, they can move in the yeah, labour market more easily. On, on age groups and so as well. you've got this, uh, this, um, this part in the, in the labour market and we have to make sure we can uh, support people who are more in difficulty and precarity because this to get them out of this the tend to be an increasing yeah. movement and uh, what was we, said we uh, about there, the, the, the young generations coming up and that seems to be a universal sore point across the EU it's youth unemployment I mean out of the EU 28 20 percent of youth workers are unemployed 22 percent is even higher in the eurozone the 19 the 19 countries there uh, in France it's 25 percent in Spain 47 percent what is going on it's going on that we have a very uh, difficult uh, productive tissue and educational system. That is what is going on in Spain. And uh, the, the, the worst situation is that part of this, uh, this 47%, they are generally what Madame have said, people without uh, knowledge, without education, without formation, okay. so with an enormous difficulty to find job. Why? Because we have this a horrible bubble of the building sector uh, where people abandon the, the education system very young just to have uh, 3,000 euros a, a month just putting bricks one and one another. No? Oh, okay. And now, now they are with nothing. No, and it's also the part of the question, perhaps, mobility of how does that work? Labour mobility across the EU. I mean, we see a lot of uh, young people now moving to the UK because that's where their jobs are. Is that overall the influx of EU uh, workers to the UK? Do you see it as a good thing or bad thing? We know it's come up a lot in that EU-UK referendum debate. Well, you know, from my perspective, it, it's actually a very good thing. Um, it, you know, and even the UK at the moment has record levels of employment, and that's including, you know, something like three million people from outside the UK are also employed. Then there's one of the issues, though, is whether we're actually really using those skills that people bring us, or whether people are working, you know, in jobs for 
you know, which they're, they're overqualified. So I think this is a challenge for Europe as a whole, is yeah. about how we maintain the skills of pe people's skills, May I be you know, even with mobility. Absolutely. May I be provocative uh, facing uh, some members of the table? These things like social damping, that or that, are now used probably by some unions I don't want to... I come from the unions. I use like protectionist barriers to mobility, and that scares me very much. Miss Rosier, I... workers' mobility is, is good when it's uh, wished by workers, and it's not uh, something you, te you tend to because you're forced by the economic condition you're in, or by, by a, a company which w wants to wants to force you taxes in, somewhere an, else. in another country to uh, force uh, matters of social dumping, and in some some sectors with low qualification but a need for a workforce, mm -hmm. for example agriculture, transport, or building sector. There you have companies using uh, workforce from other countries to uh, have lower uh, lower cost of workers, and this is a real problem for local companies in some countries. I think they're different. Uh, the different solutions uh, we can take. And I think there's a political solution, which is the European Youth Employment Initiative. Indeed, and a billion they have euros spent handed out last one, year, but where one did One billion go? into it, and it means that 650,000 people find a job what, whatsoever. And I think it's better to start your biography with a job and not with unemployment. Yes. And that's and where the EU There's another Brussels solution to too, then, on a member state level. I know that there is a, a, a combination of just about five 500 companies in Spain and they again on the family sector they try to to build up the job so it comes up to the expectations of the the families the parents so I there's a lots lots of solutions I think there's not only let's, one let's, one way to let's do. end on that very positive note then and a message to all employers out there the happier you keep your employees the better business will be and the better the economy will work thanks indeed to all my guests for having joined us here thank around you. the table in the, the eu parliament in brussels thanks to you at home for having watched as well that brings us to the end of this half of talking europe